What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to part 2 of our Madden 20 realistic rebuild of the Atlanta Falcons. We are through the first 5 years where all we really have to show for it is one divisional title and a really, really dominant MVP season. Second MVP winning season for the now retired Matt Ryan. We sit here at the end of the first 5 years as a 91 overall team that failed to make the playoffs with a 7-9 record. We have just We've just struggled. We've found ways to piss away seasons. And here's where our team is at right now. Uh, the new man in the middle, Jason Poole out of Oregon. 87 superstar dev quarterback. Uh, definitely a different style quarterback than Matt Ryan. 88 speed, 90 acceleration, great agility. Really a dual threat. Um, and he's played, he's played well. Definitely played well. Uh, you could say the least. Really, really emerging as well. I mean, obviously the interception, 17 picks. A little too high for my liking. But uh, he, he's dominant. He is very, very dominant. And really the big story of this part, part two of the rebuild, is going to be paying him and trying to build a roster around his mega contract. we still got Todd Gurley doing his thing. He's up there in age. He's 31. But he's returned home after leaving the Rams back to Georgia. And uh, he's been doing his thing for the Rams. He's been our most consistent player since he came in. Has yet to go under 1,000 yards a season, which is a thing of beauty. Wide receivers. A couple guys you should know. We got Nikhil Harry and Calvin Ridley still here. We have uh, KJ Hamler, who in real life was a second round pick of the Denver Broncos in the 2020 draft. Speedster. He is a superstar dev. So we have a really nice wide receiver core. If you don't remember, Julio Jones did surprisingly retire out of nowhere. I thought we'd be able to get him to at least 33, 34. I think he retired at 32. Uh, offensive line's on point. Really, really solid offensive line. Almost everyone's at least an 85 overall. Albert Aquibunam, another Denver Bronco pick. We have him at tight end, 84 star. Uh, he's pretty solid as well. Defensively, uh, this is a team that has been above average, I would say, defensively. We've struggled to find elite talent to pair next to Grady Jarrett on this defensive line. But uh, Savage here, Terrell Savage of the Cincinnati. He's still young. He's only two years in the league. He's already up to an 86. So uh, we're definitely expecting him. Don't just look at the silver and discredit him. I think he's going to be a new really solid player. Um, Barrett is young, 24 almost an 80 and we have favors who's 26 78 we have smith who's 77 only 24 we did just trade for favors but it's probably gonna be better go with smith here and he's he is also a scheme fit our secondary of jc jackson kendall sheffield and isaiah oliver as well as keanu neal swift uh, who we drafted straight out the gate uh, he's a superstar dev he's already a monster scheme fit linebacking core we have Dion jones clinton's been a little bit of a, he was like a late round flyer that emerges with starter hard work does pay off. I do give chances to guys. Uh, and Patrick Queen, he's, he's a monster. Absolute monster. It's who we drafted to kick off this rebuild in the 2020 draft. Uh, him and Deion Jones really could not ask for a better modern-day linebacking pairing for what these guys do. They're pretty much big safeties, but uh, they're really, really good. And hopefully they can put it all together here as we get ready for year number six. As you can see, there's no Super Bowl trophy behind Dan Quinn Everything left to play for for the final five years of this rebuild. Let's go out there and do it. Free agency, really, there's there's only a couple positions that I do want to try and improve. Uh, and they're on the defense. It's edge rusher and then maybe getting another younger guy at corner. Uh, there is, you know, not really an upgrade here. I would be more so looking for an upgrade because our corners are in that 27, 28, 29 range. But uh, there's no one that I really feel comfortable with. Uh, and the edge rusher is a big one here. We have at left end, Elion Thomas, 89 superstar dev, defensive end out of LSU. He, you know, he is a scheme fit. See, the issue is we have a quarterback that's going to have to get paid sooner or later. This is going to be a very expensive. I, I would be remiss if I don't at least offer him. We'll give him 505, 11.5, three years, just shy of 50 mil. We'll come with the top bid. Could come back to bite us in the ass, but we have been horrible at applying pressure. It's been Grady Jarrett and nobody else getting sacked so far in this rebuild. So if we have to take a little bit of a risk here that may come back to bite us and salary cap-wise in a couple years, so be it. But just sitting here doing nothing, at least we've put a bid in. With how our bids have been going here, it seems we're batting about 500 for our big free agency get. So it would be nice to get Thomas, but if not, I mean, again, knowing that we're going to have to pay Pool a ton of money... It might not be the worst thing in the world. And he rejected it. This is it's absurd. It's literally absurd because, look, the free agency influence, I have D-line. I literally bought the thing that's supposed to, like, when you overbid, get the guy. And back-to-back -back times. Who did we try to get before? Uh, AJ Epineza. Last year. Superstar Dev DN. 
Came with a top bid by a little bit. Didn't get him. Came for the top bid for Thomas. Didn't get him. It's just, it's not in the cards. Our draft to kick off the rebuild. Pretty damn good draft, if I do say so myself. Uh, didn't get an edge rusher, but the fact that we finished with two 70s, a 73, number 19 in True Talent. We got that in the seventh round in uh, Amundsen from Temple. Gigantic tackle. Looking pretty good. Got a fullback there to fill up the depth chart. Third round, 71 linebacker Harvey Davis out of Oklahoma. Second round, we got Barry Paul. Two first names. A little weird. And with two first names, come on, let's be honest. You're, you're a psychopath. Uh, but he's a 74. He's only 21, so definitely a lot of upside. And our first pick was Kevin Kennard out of Central Michigan. Chippewa, 75 with a hidden dev. Uh, we got him at 14. I think he was number 10 in true talent, so a really good value pick there. And I wanted to get younger uh, in the secondary, and we definitely got that. I wanted to get younger in the secondary, and I wanted to get an edge rusher. Let's see. I think there would have been, after 14 in the first round, there were a couple edge rushers that did go off the board. Uh, Will Patrick, 71 normal. Uh, the biggest one, I might have been Ingram, I think. That defensive tackle. I, I was really quite... Is he, is he small? Is he undersized? Like, yeah, this guy. This was the only other guy. We absolutely don't need a D tackle at this point. We're not switching to a 3-4, and he's Superstar X Factor. He was really good. He had a 7-4 combine grade. That would have been actually a, a really, really good pick. Um... You know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Hopefully our guy is, is Superstar X Factor as well. So to kick off year six or year one of part two, whatever you want to call it, uh, we're an 80 on overall team. One of the best rosters in the game. Uh, no real changes from where we started. Todd Gurley has regressed, which is, you know, pretty much expected at this point. I think he's the only guy though that has faced some regression uh, on the offensive side and the defensive side, man, see, again, we need to get younger in the second. It would have been awesome. Yeah, if you throw in now that we know he's an X Factor, uh, right next to Grady Jarrett. I mean, Grady Jarrett, what, 31, 32? Getting his replay, I mean, let's just hope this guy's at least superstar. If this guy can pull out superstar dev, I'm not going to be upset about it. If he's only a star, knowing that my heart, my mind was saying, just get the best player available, get this freakishly outrageous D tackle. I should have got it, but um, we did not. And we got a new X-Factor on the defense in Patrick Queen. Chilling with shutdown, which is awesome because he's his own cover. So that's all you could ask for. So hopefully, Kennard comes up with a great dev trait. In year six, we can make the playoffs and get our second divisional title of the rebuild. We have an early bye week here in year six and no real idea how the season's going to go. We are 500, two and two, but only a game back in the south. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's an early buy. I don't know. We've, we, we won. We've scored like over 30 points, which is good. But we do have two losses. Uh, contract, we got Grady Jarrett. We'll start off by giving him a one-year deal. If he'll keep taking that, that's phenomenal. Same with, I mean, Keanu Neal. He's not going to regress that hard over the course of that contract. We have Swift, who's in his prime. We'll give him a five-year deal. I love safety contracts in this game. We'll come back and negotiate with him. Uh, we have Trip at right tackle. I mean, he's only going to get better. It's going to be a very expensive. I don't think we're going to be signing any free agents, which, I mean, at the end of the day, free agents are few and far between big time reasons for you to win. But here's the big one 126 minutes. We didn't have the, the luxury. He was a second round pick, so we didn't have the luxury of the fifth year option. Five year deal. He wants more money. And, I mean, at this point, the only two we didn't get are Swift and Poole, and we got to give them deals. So we'll make, make, make sure these guys get paid. Probably going to be pretty tight, though, and handicap us in future years if we want to spend in free agency. Now, at the end of year six, uh, progress. We were seven wins last year. We got eight wins this year. But it's never a great feeling when you pay your hopeful franchise quarterback almost $130 million and you go 500 with the supporting cast that we have available. Um, well, uh, dev trade. Do we have the dev trade of our corner yet? And it's star dev. Awesome. Just awesome. Fantastic. It's great. Uh, pool's sensational. We, we brought up the intercept. Almost 70, almost 80% completion percentage. 35 touchdowns, four picks. One hell of a year. Gurley still just automatic. 1,000 yards, almost double-digit touchdowns. Receiving Calvin really had a big year. Hamler had a nice season. Really everyone outside of Nikhil Harry put up expected numbers. Deion Jones, Queen. 
One and two in tackles as expected. Savage, seven sacks, 14 TFLs. Ain't mad at it. Ain't mad at that for sure. Uh, three picks for Queen, three for Oliver, two for Jones, two for Keanu Neal. So let's just see a couple things. Just, just out of curiosity, where is the guy we didn't get to sign as a free agent? Is he here somewhere? I'm not going to lie if I can remember his name. Um, well, there's the guy we didn't draft. Chance Ingram on the Cardinals up to an 82 Superstar X Factor Unstoppable Force. I'm sure they're ecstatic with that selection. But it doesn't look like the guy that we were going to try to sign in free agency is showing up here really on the old sack sheet. So that's good. Maybe maybe we're further ahead by not signing that superstar edge rusher. Zeke Elliott is your MVP. Poole was the runner-up, even though we're 8-8 eight and eight and incredibly disappointing. Let's get in the offseason, get into year 7. 9 million bucks of free agency money. Again, there's another, you know, edge rusher that looks intriguing. Jose Ali, 88 uh, not a scheme fit out of Tennessee, but, I mean, would fit our scheme. It's just not a great free agency when the top of the – everyone's 30 for the most part, almost around 30. We're not at a point that we need to uh, really dip into any of those guys. Now, that's interesting. Ellis Garrett, like 20 million bucks. What's this guy's stats looking like? 90 speed, 93 catching, 6'3", 205. Hmm. Oh, this guy. What's this guy? Brian Duke, speed rusher. 85. He's 26. Uh, you know, we only had 9 million bucks. We'll just we'll just sit on the outside yet again. I had to show this one. This is a real good pick. Todd Gurley regressed. Even though he's really solid, it's it's that time. And Malcolm Dixon. Hopefully I don't get demonetized for saying that last name. But he's a scheme fit. Number three in true talent. 77 hidden dev. Please don't be a star. But 91 speed. Great agility. Great carrying. Nice. Real, real good. Maybe one of the best running backs we've ever drafted. So our draft definitely peaked after the selection of the running back, Dixon. Uh, we pretty much traded out. There wasn't, I mean, those are the guys that I that really looks of some value. We got two corners, normal devs, and a linebacker, normal devs. Just solid depth guys. But Dixon, man, he might actually have a chance straight up to take the starting gig from Gurley, depending on how bad Todd's regressed. Year number seven, we're at 89 overall, and yeah, it was a real good decision to draft the running back. Gurley's down to a 74. Out of respect for him, how good he's been, I'm not going to cut him, but Dixon is going to be our starting back. Outside of that, I mean, Ridley's regressing as well. I mean, this keeps getting old. Some of these old familiar faces, the literal familiar faces, guys that are real players. It's around, you know, year seven, year eight that they start to show their age just a little bit. Outside of Lindstrom. Lindstrom's been here forever, and he has not regressed one damn bit. Been very, very solid. Uh, defensively, you know, pretty much going as is. Kennard, we actually probably can bump him up a little bit, the depth chart, but still, you just can't help but think, what if we had that superstar D-tackle to play right next to Grady Jarrett? We'll get over it. We'll get over it. Um, yeah, everything else remains the same on defense for the most part. Very similar. Keeping the chemistry with the team, we essentially just got a brand new running back that we hope is something, please, for the love of God. Better than a star dev trade. All right, about midway point through year seven, we're four and two. It's better. First place, better. And I didn't see this. Our running back, superstar dev trait. Malcolm Dixon looks like an absolute monster. Already up to an 82 overall, 83 with the confidence boost. So there we go. We didn't mess that draft up. Uh, we'll actually spend this real quick. We got Mike Wayne, our lone player upgrade, depth linebacker. But look at the contracts. Again, be, last year was the expensive year. This year, also kind of looking a little expensive for sure. Um, well, I'll tell you right now. Looking at all the available guys, we're going to have to let Todd go. We'll look at his stats, so this will be his last year. But this guy, Washington, phenomenal depth, very affordable. We'll get him locked up. Uh, I think you could also, Sheffield, you got to move on. Isaiah Oliver, got to move on. Uh, Barrett. What's the uh, yearly total on that? That's not, that's not bad. We'll get him. Calvin Ridley, I'm probably going to move on. Chris Lindstrom, I like keeping him here, so we'll, we'll actually try to retain him. Even the offensive line, are, oh, you're going to bend me over. Okay. Maybe you won't keep him. Uh, Garrison, oh, oh my God, we're getting getting railroad. Okay, we'll start with the, more, the top priority. Getting KJ Hamler until he's 30. He is the electrifying playmaker. Okay, what's my money? Grady Jarrett, one-year deal? Is this still on the table? One-year deal? There, Grady Jarrett knows what's up. Uh, Nikhil Harry, he has lived below expectations, so I'm going to prioritize paying KJ Hamler first. 
I think we'll get Garrison and Hamler locked up and maybe look at that tackle, Washington. And then everyone else, you know, more so uh, Chris Lindstrom, Nikhil Harry, we'll, we'll reevaluate at the end of the season because we're going to get pretty tight with the salary cap when we lock in our main priorities. A much better first round by second divisional title of the rebuild for the Atlanta Falcons. 10 and 6. Very nice. Very nice. Finishing with a 92 overall base team. Jason Poole, sensational. Should be secured himself a superstar X Factor. 39 touchdowns, four picks. Again, you know, we, we kind of hinted at it in the first part of the rebuild. This solidifies it. Falcons OP Sim Cheese quarterback team. Absolutely. That's sensational numbers. The rookie Dixon, very good as well. 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns as a rookie. Doesn't get a lot better than that, especially with how heavy we pass the ball. I mean, look at that. I mean, Gurley got seven tutties. Poole got an additional six. 45 total touchdowns. And we got almost 5,000 total yards. Uh, KJ Hamler, 1,000 yards. Harry, okay. Albert O, fine season. Dixon chipped in almost 605. Unreal. We get a stud. Deion Jones over 100 tackles. We get 8.5 from Barrett, 7. Grady Jarrett, 7 from Savage. Uh, we're just not going to have a premier edge rusher. That is that is what it is. Isaiah Oliver leading the team with three interceptions. Yearly Awards MVP is Jason Poole. So our second time in this rebuild in seven years that our quarterback has won the MVP. That's always something to be proud of. He's your Offensive Player of the Year. We also have Dixon, who is your Offensive Rookie of the Year. Jason Poole is your Quarterback of the Year. And that's about it. But still, I love the individual success. Might as well look at the career stats here as we will have some uh, players leaving us. Todd Goes going to be leaving us. Obviously, a lot of those numbers were put up at the Rams, but still a really, really nice career for him. And as a Florida Gator fan, probably the, one of the few Georgia Bulldogs that I really like and I am a fan of. Um, Calvin Ridley, he's, he's, he's probably over with us. 8,600 yards, 67 touchdowns. Appreciate that. Definitely appreciate what he's been able to bring. On the defensive side, we're more so. I mean, at any moment, Keanu O'Neill could decide to retire. Grady Jarrett is a 76 sacks, could surprisingly retire. Isaiah Oliver is bouncing. He has 18 interceptions. Those are actually interception numbers. Those are pretty damn good for a rebuild. Interceptions are generally lower, and he is the model of consistency in this backfield. Uh, Josh Jackson, seven picks, five picks there for Kendall Sheffield. But either way, we got a first round by. And we're going to kick off our divisional playoff game, our playoff run against a 9-7 Minnesota Vikings team. Come on, we should handle them. We got the, we got the MVP on our team. If, like, if Marcus Mariota was good. That's essentially the quarterback we have from Oregon. There's an alter, you know, alternate universe. We have the good Marcus Mariota on our team. So come on, man, let's do the job. Let's seal the deal. Let's do the job. Let's seal the deal. That's all I want to know. Seven, up 10 points. Minnesota closed it up to end the first half, but we start out the second half very strongly. Back-to-back -back touchdowns, but the Vikings will not go away. We're probably going to need to get 40 to feel comfortable in this game. Or our defense just shows up. That's also something that could happen. 10-point lead, and we're going we're gonna to be able to see this one out. 38-28, to 28, the Falcons in year seven. Big playoff win. Random QB for the Vikings. Really damn good performance, but Poole did more than enough. For his team to get their berth in the NFC Championship game. Nothing like a divisional rivalry with the Super Bowl on the line. Panthers-Falcons. The battle of the NFC South. Atlanta scoring first. But I love seeing that, man. As much as it sounds like scripted, all, of course, there would be two teams from the same division that made the, the game to the Super Bowl. I like it. It adds, adds that little bit more umph as Atlanta gets a nice little touchdown at the end. Your Falcons to get a lead. Still got a one-point lead here as we enter the dying moments of the third quarter. Defense has played well. Hopefully they don't gas. We know Carolina still has Christian McCaffrey doing his thing. We tied up at 28 apiece. Defense holds them to nothing. They get a touchdown. It's fourth down. We'll come in for one play. I felt like we didn't do enough gameplay in the first episode. Um, why don't we run it with our flashy new running back, Dixon. See if we can get it. To, oh, we're running right into the belly of the beast. I think that's Brian Burns on the top. Yeah, it's done. Of course. Gets, he, he did nothing. 37 yards on 14 carries. They got Baker Mayfield at quarterback. It's over. There we go. Back to the drawing board for year eight. Only good news as we enter the offseason is that our quarterback, Jason Poole, did get himself his X-Factor. 
The bad news is it might be the most useless grouping of abilities for a quarterback I have ever seen. First one free. Okay. Juke. How many times am I juking with a quarterback? Never. We got Leapfrog. Spin Cycle. Homer. Fast Break. That better be like something unreal. Like, make your O-line block better. Because this is easily, without a shout out, the worst stable of superstar abilities I've ever seen a quarterback have. All right, so now to try to get the ugly taste of our quarterback's abilities out of our mouth. Um, we did have, we actually have okay amount of salary cap. I'm going to look at two under-the-radar signings. We got Watson here, 81 normal dev corner. Scheme fit, though, he's only 25. And then we have Chris Trent, 26, 85 overall wide receiver as we lost Nikhil Harry and uh, Ridley there. We also had a couple other guys on the team. We had Grady Jarrett. You know, we got him signed. He retired. And we also had um, another retirement, I thought. Maybe not. No, maybe not. We're still good. But Grady Jarrett retired. That sucks. But that also gave us some money to hopefully get some two really low-key solid signings. Oh, we got something here, fellas. Gilbert Peck from Texas. 77 speed rusher. Four and true talent. Got him at pick 29. Oh, please be a stud. Please be a stud. Last time we got a 77 hidden dev. It was our superstar running back. Hopefully he follows suit. Spoiler alert, I drafted a quarterback because I had three of these guys first round. But I'm looking here. I have a second, second round pick. I think we're going to have to pull an Eagles. I know I was like, already was like, I got to record this because it is a realistic rebuild. But given this draft board, given our needs, I might as well just try and become the Philadelphia Eagles AQB factory and see if I can flip two second-round pick quarterbacks in the future first. We're going to get McKenny here, 71, number 28, true talent. I think I could probably flip both these guys in the future first-round picks. Okay, so a really, really bad draft board after we got our beast defensive end led us to become a QB factory. We got Taylor Marshall, 74, hidden dev quarterback. We also got Graham McEnany, McEnany, whatever, too hard, but he's another Oregon quarterback. Literally like the same height and weight, I think, as the other Oregon quarterback we got. Um, pretty damn similar, too, as, as a freak athlete, but if, I think, honestly, if one, if, even if they don't have superstar, even if they're only star dev, we might be able to flip a 19th and 29th in the second round into us having three first round picks next year. But then again, we are, you know, we're getting kind of thin. Maybe we have to trade him for a player because, I mean, who are we going to draft in years nine and especially year nine? That's going to make that much of an impact in year 10 unless we find X factors. But. I don't know. It's just something else we could try to do. But Gilbert, uh, Gilbert Peck is the creme de la creme of this year's draft class. Come on. Give me a good roll of the dice when it comes to his dev trade. Oh, we had to make a blockbuster trade. And we're able to flip one of our two quarterbacks, the lesser of the two. And we flipped our second string right tackle, who's an 81. And we flipped our second string defensive end, who's in a contract year, to get Teague, a free safety, 25-year-old star dev safety from the Philadelphia Eagles. But more so, I, I think, just having two safeties because Keanu Neal, probably not going to be able to make it. This might be Keanu Neal's last season. He's already regressed down. I think he's 84, 83. So we got a really, really good safety that should solidify our safety group for the remainder of the rebuild. And after the bye here in year number eight, uh, we are sitting 5-1 and one dominant team. We're, we're getting to that part of the rebuild where we're really just, uh, even we're not even that overpowered. We're 87 overall. Uh, but contract. So first up, we do have Teague, who obviously there's a reason why he was available for trade because he is in a contract year. But we'll get him to a five-year deal, retain him. He's going to be our future starter. Savage has definitely developed into a really, really solid defensive end. Even though his stats have been, you know, I don't think he's got double digit. But at this point, you know, we pretty much need as, as many guys to stick around as we can. Um... Buckhalter's solid depth, but do we really need depth at this point? We'll give him a five-year deal if he'll take that. We will. If not, we'll walk away. Oh, we're walking away. We are definitely walking away. Uh, yeah, that's that's about it. Maybe maybe we'll be able to get a free agent. Who knows? Whew. And we end year eight, 12 and four. Landing our third divisional title of the rebuild. Very, very nice. Uh, do we have the dev trade yet of our quarterback? Marshall, he didn't play at all. Let's just let's just peek. I'm peek. He's gonna be traded. He's only a star. 
We're going to try to trade him. We're going to find a way, find a team that's desperate enough to give us a first-round pick for that man right there. We didn't get a first-round pick for the safety. Um, first-round pick, but we got a safety for the first quarterback. I definitely want to at least flip that into a first-round with Marshall. It should be good. But either way, let's focus on the tops. Everyone that's out there playing played very well with a 12-4 and record. Uh, Pool actually dipped off. Oh, this is that time where we just become a running team out of the blue, I guess. Or no, no. Not even that. It was just a little bit of an off year. Um, our receiving weapons weren't great. We had 69. We had a 74. It really was KJ Hamler. And that was about it. As a receiver, Deion Jones with the team again in tackles. Savage seven sacks. Picks are dead. It just wasn't. I don't know how that happened. 16th offensively. What are we? Must be really high defense. Number one defense in the league. That's how we got this record. MVP went to Tua Tagovailoa. He's doing his thing now for the Chargers. For individual awards. I don't think you're going to see too many Atlanta Falcons outside of the best damn lineman here. Brett Tanner. But we got a buy, man. Another buy. Can't complain too much about that. Let's get a Super Bowl. And then let's get a first round pick for our quarterback. That seems like the only logical way to end year eight here. So without further ado. We got a matchup at home against a 9-7 Chicago Bears team. Alrighty. So it didn't work when we had the MVP. When he was the MVP, he didn't play amazing. So now that he has just pedestrian stats, I'm expecting us to win the Super Bowl. That's just how I feel subconsciously the Madden Sim works. It's like, oh, well, things are too good. We got to bring you back down to earth. But when you least expect it, boom, here's a miracle run the gauntlet type kind of scenario. So we are down 10 here. Down 7. I like it. A little bit of momentum shift in the third quarter. Tied up at 17 apiece. Fourth quarter game on the line. What team wants it more? I'm going to assume we have a little bit more playoff experience. I haven't seen Chicago in the playoffs. But they were clutch. Ice in their veins to tie it up. But... Come on. Oh! Love it! I assume that was an interception on our first pass in overtime. Year 9. Well, it's not year 10, Super Bowl or bust, but it is about to be year 9, and we got to finally try to get an edge rush here. We've, we're getting top bid on Caleb on Chasson. He can play right outside linebacker. We're moving to defensive line. Don't matter. Either way, we need to get him. Outside of that, we got a new tight end as Albert O hit free agency. Diago Parra, big time bid here over the second place. Texans should grab him. And then why not take a flyer? Wide receiver is going to be our biggest need in the draft. So I should be able to get at least one of three. Hamler will be two. And Mike Evans should make it. So we only need one wide receiver from the draft. So hopefully we can get Big Mike. Even though obviously he's a 78. But he's still an X-Factor. So why not? It happened. We finally got an edge rusher. Caleb Vosche saw 99 overall. Welcome to Atlanta. Over the draft, no one was really offering up any more than a third rounder for our quarterback. So we just went into the draft with our picks that we had. And hopefully we can flip the quarterback midseason for a starting caliber player at one of our weaker spots. Uh, we finished the draft. Actually, the computer picked me up a 770 overall. In the, I like that. Uh, we made our first two picks home runs. We got Deion Carey. He was 76 normal. I mean, he might not look amazing, but he was number six in the draft. So, I mean, it is what it is. Weak draft. Second round, we got Dante Thomas. Nice little running back to come in and complement uh, what we already have here. And he's 76 hidden dev. So, really, really good fit for the team as well. Hopefully, before we kick off the regular season, teams that need a quarterback will let us you know, upgrade our own team. And we can flip the man behind pool. Out of year nine, we, we got to flip this quarterback, man. We were stuck with him at the draft. We needed a wide receiver. And we didn't get John Ross. We got his cousin. His name was like Jeff Ross, the roaster. But we're able to flip Marshall and Favors, our, our depth defensive end, to bring in an 88 overall wide receiver. A massive upgrade for the team. Now let's preview the roster right here before year nine. So we're at 91 overall. It's not. It, it's a great spot to be. We're as good as we've been at any single point in this rebuild. You look at the squad. Uh, it's a really good squad. What we're going to do is actually just to improve the offensive line. We're going to make Brett Washington. We're going to flip him over to right guard, which would give everyone on the offensive line at least a starting grade of an 80 overall plus, which is what it does. Uh, our wide receiver core that has been fixed. We got Mike Evans. Obviously, at this point in his career, he is what it is. But we got Hamler. 96 superstar. We got Ross, who we just traded for. Joseph Ross out of Alabama. 88, 6'4", 227 with 92 speed. I like a little bit of a mini offspring of Julio Jones here. 
to fill in for Atlanta, getting another big, pretty freaky athletic wide receiver, even though he's you know clearly with that start Evan in 88 at 27, not reaching Julio levels. He should be a great get for this offense. Defensively, not much has changed. Everything looks fairly consistent. Uh, we still got Deion Jones hanging on tooth and nail. Keanu Neal will be more so of a depth guy this year. And hopefully our corner depth isn't tested, even though injuries are off, so it doesn't really matter. Going to year nine, and we're 3-2. and two. Not bad. Just a win off the pace here. And we have the buy and the game in hand. Contract, so this is always a very important thing. Who do we want to be part of the final year, the final team? And as we look at it, I mean, we're getting old. We are definitely getting old. If you don't have a chance to play in Keanu Neal, Mike Evans, Deion Jones, it's, it's just, we're just at that time where we got to make, make that tough decision. Um, first up, Barry Paul, though, 84 overall D tackle. We'll definitely try our best to keep him here. Might as well keep Braden, man. Do we really need to be trying to scramble for a punter that's been with us for a while? Kennard is our best corner in terms of upside and youth on the roster. He's not going to be able to probably get much better players than that. Cushion Barry on the center. Might as well just hold on to him. If he will, stake his whole career. He wants more money. Of course, now he wants to get paid. I will come back and give another offer to Cushion Barry and Barry Paul, but Deion Jones, Mike Evans, more so Deion Jones and Keanu Neal. Uh, it's the end of an era on the defensive side of the ball for the Atlanta Falcons. All right, this is very few and far between, but we got a preview at Kennard, who we just got a new contract, our corner. Uh, out of nowhere, came with Superstar. I remember when we drafted him. We picked him over a Superstar X-Factor defensive tackle. It was a long road, but just like that, earned himself a Superstar ability throughout year nine. I love it. And at the end of year nine, first round by most likely means, and it does, another, our fourth NFC South title here in uh, year nine for the Atlanta Falcons, 13-3. and three. I love seeing that. We're a 92 overall. Felt like every single week we're putting up 30-some points. Life was good, as Jason Poole might have won his second MVP. 4,500 yards, 43 touchdowns to only nine interceptions. Also uh, throwing in 300 yards, three rushing touchdowns. The running attack, Dixon Thomas. You know, hopefully your name's not Thomas and you won't get offended by saying Dixon Thomas. But uh, that's a real, I mean, that's great rushing attack, great passing attack. KJ Hamler, 1,200 yards, eight tutties. Ross coming in. I mean, that's pretty good production. I'll take that given how really lacking our receiver core was. I love eight touchdowns for my backup tight end. That's cool, right? Love seeing that. Deion Jones, if this is going to be his final year, which most likely it is going out 100 some time. I might might bring him back just just because. Uh, Barry Paul, 11 and a half sacks as a D-tackle. Signed him up, got him on a real affordable deal. Caleb Von Chasson, the big 99 overall free agent. 10 and a half sacks, get a pick as well. Um, yearly awards, MVP, Jason Poole, his second MVP award. Congratulations to you, sir. He's also the Offensive Player of the Year. I mean, Troy Dye has been killing it for the Eagles. I feel like he's got Defensive Player of the Year more often than not. Jason Poole is your quarterback of the year. Tanner is your lineman of the year. My God, I wish they had a way to upgrade dev traits for alignment. I don't care that there's no abilities. I would love to see Tanner who's got all lineman of the year like four times. Just came get a superstar. But we got a first round bye, which is great here in year nine. Proves our odds of playing for a Super Bowl. And we kick things off with an NFC South divisional rivalry game in the divisional round of the playoffs. The 13-3 Atlanta Falcons against the 11-5 Bucks. I just want to see what they're doing with it. They just got a bunch of really good generated players. They have Grant Delpit and Devin White, the LSU combo, and I've three really good X factors that they got through the god honest nature of the Madden randomized draft. All right, let's go, man. I just Will Smith has a new song. I just saw that on Facebook with uh, Joiner Lucas. Oh my God, Big Willie's back, and let's make it so Atlanta's back. The Dirty Bird. Let's bring that back. Against Atlanta. I mean, come on. It's Tampa, Atlanta. I feel like I can't remember the last time the Bucks beat Atlanta. Like, literally could have been just as, as recent as last year. But um, in real life, that is. And we are not playing particularly well in the fourth quarter. But a touchdown here, which we do get. Oh, should be enough to seal this one out. Just bleed the clock, baby. Bleed the clock. They had 40 seconds. And they go. God damn it. For the final free agency period, uh, we only we have a little bit of money to get one. You know, it's a five-point upgrade. Griffin here to come in and lead the middle of the defense as Deion Jones has retired. 
It's not a big, you know, he's 27 to 80. He's just a solid linebacker. So we're going to come in with a really, really big bid because I highly doubt we'll be able to draft anyone better than a 75. For our final draft here, actually wasn't that bad. We, we went out pretty well. I simmed out after the third round because I didn't really like the board that was left. But I got a 74 guard in the third round. I got a 70 middle linebacker. That's a, that's a scheme fit, pass cover guy. And then we got Garrison Moss, number two player in the draft. Normal dev, which stings, but a 78, base 78 overall. I mean, you got to think about managers. That's what, that's what Bosa got. Nick Bosa got that as a rookie in real life, and we just got that in Garrison Moss. Now, Nick Bosa had a better dev trade, and Moss is unfortunately only going to have one year as a rotational DN to make his mark, but hey, it's, it's a great pick to finish out the Falcons rebuild from a draft standpoint. But now it's Super Bowl or bust time here in year 10. Year 10, come on, boys. Just, just make the playoffs and don't get skunked by the goddamn Bucks. Okay, that's all I want to ask for. Uh, wide receiver core, obviously we're a little bit lacking at that third spot, but we still got Hamler and Ross, who I like. Offensive line is the best offensive line in uh, the damn game. Uh, Pool's 97. We have Dixon, who's 92. Thomas, who was like our second round pick last year, X-Factor, out the gate. Drafted as an X-Factor. Hell yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, that's, that's a great one. I don't care if we, we can run the ball 500 times this year. I wouldn't hate it. Uh, defense still looks, you know, on point. You know, new faces. No more Keanu Neal. No more Deion Jones. But we have, you know, adequate replacements there. The line is solid. No X factors. No superstars. Nothing like Grady Jarrett. But 94 in Terrell Savage. He's been really, really consistent for us. Not really a breakout year. Kennard got himself that superstar dev trait last offseason. Or uh, last season, midseason, actually. But uh, so it's Patrick Queen's defense. Patrick Queen, Chasson, we got a lot of LSU bloodlines here. They're going to need to carry this defensive unit as we look to win the Super Bowl here at the dying moments, at the buzzer in year 10. And now with a massive week 17, 42 25 victory over the Vikings to cap off our fifth divisional title. We have five divisional titles and I think like two playoff wins. It's not great, but Darren Quinn has definitely done enough during the regular season to keep his job for this full 10 years as we are sitting before you. A 93, we'll just sim and find out our opponent before we look at the final stats. We'll be taking on, again, hey, look, another NFC South team in the Carolina Panthers. Am I worried about it? Yeah, got to be honest with you, a little bit worried about it, but now we can actually hop in and influence the gameplay. Uh, look at the stats here. Uh, Jason Poole, really, really solid year. 4,200 yards, 38 touchdowns. His completion percentage has always been freakishly good. Uh, running the ball, almost 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns for Malcolm Dixon. Receiving 1,100 yards, 8 touchdowns for Hamler. Pair our tight end, 940 and 13 touchdowns. I like seeing that. Defensively, Griffin stepping in, filling in nicely for Deion Jones. 116 tackles, 9 TFLs, 5.5 sacks, and an interception for the 80. Formerly 80, now he's up to an 84 with the plus two confidence. He gained two overall points. Not too shabby. 12 sacks, Barry Paul, who's been sensational at defensive tackle. Was a depth guy, right? Depth guy got some, you know, D tackle two ATTFLs and then blew up when he got paid. How many players can you say that about in your own franchises? Once you give them their big deal, and this deal wasn't even that big, but they, they get paid and then they start just taking their game to another level. Barry Paul has been very solid, even though he has two first names, never trust him. Wouldn't trust that guy as far as I could throw him. But he's playing very well. Lamar Jackson's your MVP beating out Jason Poole, who's looking for that third MVP award. Carolina's Baker Mayfield. They beat us. I can't remember when because I'm recording this rebuild over multiple days. But one of those losses in the playoffs was against Baker Mayfield and the Panthers. Might have been the second to last time we made the playoffs. So that's awesome because I actually had a decision to sign Baker Mayfield or not to be Matt Ryan's replacement. And I did not go that way because I felt that, that was kind of unrealistic. And here we are. Uh, Pools, your offensive player of the year. Isaiah Simmons there for the rest of our awards. Tanner's just automatic. Just keep giving him the best lineman award. It is it is what it is. Like clockwork. So here we go. Year 10, Carolina Panthers. You can still see that they got DJ Moore, Christian McCaffrey. We know that they have Baker Mayfield. Jadavion Clowney. They have this guy, Hemingway. Probably a great author. William Lane at corner. So they get two shutdown corners. This team is stacked. Brian Burns, Dante Jackson still there. I get a couple line. Oh, my God. This team is actually stacked. 
All right. This is gonna. I mean, we're a much better team still. They're an 88. Like they, they probably have like obviously McCaffrey and more. They're up there in age, so they're probably they could you know low 80s, high 70 X factors. Can't just go strictly off X factors. We are a better team. Five point overall advantage, which makes me terrified for the sim. But at least I said things get a little funky. We're gonna hop in, control Jason Poole under center, and try and guide this team to a Super Bowl title. All right, let's go. Anytime things start to get a little one-sided, anytime we just you know have a bunch of field goal drives and we need a touchdown, we'll, we'll try to change it up here a little bit. But again, I always in these rebuilds, gameplay is fun. Gameplay is certainly an aspect I want to play with the teams that I've built. But there's there's a certain je ne sais quoi about your team in the sim just finally being good enough to finally put all together and to win. So right now things are getting a little look. look that, and then there's like the bullshit I can't avoid. Where they just get like back-to-back -back touchdowns. So I'm going to come in on this drive if we get stuck. But look, the team is doing well. Okay, they're not doing well enough. We need a field goal. We got all of our timeouts left. I have no... Okay, KJ Hamler's the guy we're going to want to go to if he can get open. Of course, Pool is like the most, like he's the the one ability that you want for a scrambling quarterback that I don't know what it is. The pocket one, the one that makes you way faster in the pocket. He doesn't have it. He has every other rushing ability except the good one. So that's annoying because if we had that, I could definitely just scramble our way into field goal range. Look, like I, the, he has the juke move. I can't even use the juke move when you'd want to. He is the, the Juke X-Factor ability or Superstar ability. Like, I could... It is easily Pool, Jason Pool, for all of his... How good he is for us. Oh, just catch this in bounce. I don't care if it's in bounce. KJ Hamler, just like that. We are in field goal range, but I don't want to be messing with that. The last couple of times we've gone to OT or anything like that, it has not worked out well for us. We'll go back to the four verts. Para, our tight end, had double-digit touchdowns. He could be the read. We're going to actually have Dixon stay back in pass pro, even if he can only chip. Oh! Let's go. Get out of here. Get out of here. Para, 30-yard touchdown. It's not over with how we found a way to choke games at the end. That was not 100% certainty, but there you go. Four touchdowns, Jason Poole, out-dueling Baker Mayfield, finally beating... A NFC South divisional rival in the playoffs in Atlanta here in year 10 are getting back to the NFC championship game. Championship game is against the 11-5 Dallas Cowboys. You already know. Anytime I play Dallas, I have to beat them. And look at it. They got Jake Fromm at quarterback. AJ Epineza, a player at, at one point in this reveal, gave us the middle finger. We gave him a huge offer and he would not come. A couple generated guys. Davis Gaither at linebacker. They got Henry Ruggs, Zeke Elliott. Another random generated freak cornerback that we're going to have to deal with. All right. Again, same. We're, we're, the, we're a very measurably higher overall. You literally can measure it. We're five overall points again uh, higher overall. So hopefully that, that goes in our favor here and we can get to the Super Bowl finally. Well, everyone knows Dallas sucks. Dallas sucks. And Atlanta needs to make up for the 28-3 memes. This is their chance to... Put all that behind them. And we are coming out with man, like a man on a mission here. Someone play that big Will. Will Smith. New track. Hot fire. Because that is pretty much where we're at. I don't even know the name of it. I think it's called Will. Literally. 35. This is dominance. This is what I want to see. Finally. Year 10. We put it all together. We have a 99 overall quarterback now. He's multiple MVPs. Dominance. Jake Fromm. Fish out of water. It's not... An SEC game against Vandy, bud. Where you can pad your stats. This is real big boy football. Pool 80% completion percentage. 300 yards. Three tutties. Over 100 yards for Dixon. As Atlanta, in year 10, has punched their ticket to the Super Bowl. And it's the all-bird Super Bowl against the 12-4 and Baltimore Ravens. They still got Lamar Jackson. He, for some reason, he's usually a popular free agency target that's available. Lamar Jackson, Hollywood Brown. They got Bydash. And a couple generated guys. Okay. What's the, what's the overall? Same thing. We actually went up one. We got a six-point overall lead here in the Super Bowl year 10. Just go do it, man. Just go do it. Like Nike. Be like Mike. Be like Jason Poole. All right. 
Come on. We'll come in. We'll come in right. I want to start this team out hot. Third and one. Let's just get a nice little run in here. Because I remember the last time we came in and run the ball, we got stuffed and it was the end of the game. And it was disappointing. Let's just prove to ourselves that with an offensive line that's oh, average overall is like a 90, that we can move the chains. And we do. Drive continues. All right, come on, boys. Punch this one away. There we go. Atlanta opening drive score. Oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Okay, a little bit of back and forth there. Slow. We'll come in here in third down. Get a tutty. Try to see if we can get a tutty. I don't even know. Maybe Dixon at the backfield is going to be our best option. Oh, we go deep. We risk it all. And it's a pass breakup. We'll have to settle for a field goal. Fourth and seven. Just let, the, let, you know, let them do what they do best. Kick it. Go up 10. Can we go the second half up 10? That would be sensational. If we go the second half up even more, that'd be great. Up 13. Defense come to play. Back-to-back -back scores for Baltimore. Makes me a little disappointed. Third down, we'll come in. What do we got? Third and five. We'll go wide receiver smash. I think Para right there in the slot is going to be our read. See if we can fit that in. Over the linebacker. In front of the safety. Oh, and it does, Para. Let's go, man. This guy here, hands. You got stick him. He is 100% using stick him. That's a beautiful thing. And they turn it over. Baltimore turns it over. They are done. Finally, a year 10. I think the last couple rebuilds, we failed to win anything. So that's great. That's sensational. Four, this is a high-scoring Super Bowl, but 48-33. Atlanta finally has the monkey out their back. Oh, B, you got Lamar there. You got Hollywood Brown. I don't know how many Super Bowls they would have won. I think they've won at least one, I recall. The Baltimore Ravens won the Super Bowl. So they've already been there, done that. This is Atlanta's time. Jason Poole gets the job done. They get to go to the old Excel sheet here. Put in, won a Super Bowl. We won a Super Bowl. And it ends all the Patriot memes, the 28-3 to or whatever the hell memes. They're all gone. So what I need you guys to do, and as we uh, get ready to hoist this trophy and find out who the Super Bowl MVP is, is decide on what team is going to be next. For the realistic rebels, we actually do have the Baltimore Ravens. We got the 49ers, Seahawks, Jets, Chiefs, Steelers, Panthers, Titans, Bucks, Cowboys, Saints, Colts, Giants, Rams, Vikings. So let me know what team you want to see next. Pool had six touchdowns. Let's go. But yeah, let me know in the comments what team you want to see next, and we can get into that about midweek. Uh, tomorrow, we are dropping the debut episode of Season 2 of Flashback Pink Slips, where we change the entire Madden 20 franchise game. Definitely go check that out. I know the views on the channel right now kind of suck, and no, one's, no one really cares about Madden, but uh, it's definitely the coolest series I've done. I hope you guys do like it and share it, because I mean, my likes suck. I, I try to look around at other people in the Madden community that are doing better video wise, and they just get way more likes than me. That's like the biggest difference. So please like the videos more. I would appreciate that. Uh, and I hope you guys generally like this video, enjoyed this video. A successful rebuild, 48-33, six touchdowns for Jason Poole, over 145 rushing yards for Dixon. As Atlanta are your Super Bowl champs. Thanks for watching. As always, first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, see 4 saying peace.